let's just say that you have 100 locks all around, right? Your brain goes, I'm getting a whole lot of keys mm -hmm. and they're all filling up and it's a little much. So I'm gonna take away some of those locks, okay? So what I need now are stronger keys to open those, right? To get the same effect and that is called tolerance. And you're gonna hear that term in addiction. That is physiologic tolerance. Tolerance means I took one bag of heroin last week, but this week if I take one bag of heroin, I don't feel anything. I need to take two. And that's because of that receptor down regulation. So your brain is trying to protect you. It's trying to protect it's you. It's saying, in one God, way. I gotta take more of these away because you're overdoing it exactly. on these opioids. It's trying to balance itself out. And the scientific term for that is homeostasis, right? Mm -hmm. That's the big word that just basically says, trying to balance things out. Yes. What are you doing? Slow down. Yeah. But at the same time, the very basic primitive part of your brain is saying, I need more, mm -hmm. I need more, mm -hmm. I need more, mm -hmm. I need more. I'm gonna let you really lead this because I, <laughs> if there's one thing I don't know anything about, neuroscience. So All right. what, how does this relate to opioid yeah, addiction? This, this is a very, very important topic for a few reasons. Number one, I want, I want the viewers to understand the basics of what's happening when you take an opioid in mm -hmm. your brain. Mm -hmm. I want the viewers to understand why it's so addictive. And I wanna make sense of the science to take a little bit of the burden away from the addict because again, society, families, doctors look at addicts in a very negative way. Right. As if almost they have control of this and they're just being selfish mm -hmm. and they're just being nasty people. Mm -hmm. right? But in a lot of ways, there is a very biological thing going on here that is making it tremendously difficult to stop. So let's go like neuroscience 101, okay? The brain, let's think of the brain as like a computer. But instead of silicone chips, we have neurons. And neurons are nerve cells. And there's billions of them in our brain. And they all communicate with each other, okay? Neurons have gaps. So in order to allow one neuron to communicate with another neuron and to do something in your brain, it sends signals, like these are two neurons here, and here's the gap, right? In order to send a signal from this neuron to this neuron to make something happen, this one has to be activated by something. Okay. So let's say an opiate. I take an opiate, and this neuron has receptors on it, which are like, let's picture a lock and key. So we have a lock right here. The opiate is like a key. It comes in and it goes click, and it opens something for this neuron. Now this neuron spits out neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and this, neur this neuron goes, oh, okay, I'm gonna do something with that now, and then communicates down the line. That's basic, basic neuroscience, that lock and key, turning on a neuron or turning off a neuron to help it communicate with others. That's how our brain communicates in an incredibly basic way. So we talked a little bit about our bodies have endogenous endorphins, right. endogenous opiates. And what that means is, again, that we have chemicals in our body that make us feel good. They allow us to feel pleasure and fun and excitement and satisfaction and a sense of reward and happiness. Those are endorphins. So when we exercise, or even when we're stressed, or if we fall in love, mm -hmm. our endogenous opioids unlock that little receptor and it spits out neurotransmitters, mostly like dopamine, in mm -hmm. certain areas of the brain, and activates that feeling of happiness and pleasure, okay? So now comes along this poppy plant that makes this opioid that looks very similar to what we have in our bodies naturally, except it's much stronger, much more potent. So if I'm a person and I'm, you know, gonna take an opiate and I inject an opiate and it goes through my vein up into my brain, the lock and key, it, it hits all of those receptors and it turns on that, that neuron and that neuron fires. And, and the answer is immense pleasure and euphoria and calm and relaxation and love and warmth and all of these positive feelings that you had to exercise for or fall in love to get, right? So now it's at your fingertips. 
This all sounds great to me. You can say, <laughs> I'm telling wonderful. you. You got it. And that's, I'm so glad you said that because, so why is that bad, yeah. right? Why is that bad? Let's just all take opiates and be happy. Yeah. Well, there's a really, really important reason. And I used the term in previous episodes, and I'm going to say it again because I think it drives home an important point. That natural endorphin that unlocks this neuron is like a tiny little whisper. When you get the opioid, whether it's a prescription or morphine or heroin, it's like a loudspeaker. It's so much stronger. It opens up all those receptors and sends all these signals through the brain. Now, what it does is it works on an area of the brain called the basal ganglia, mm -hmm. right? And that's like your reward sort of uh, pleasure basis for your brain. So it activates that. We've talked about the amygdala on some of these mm -hmm. uh, med circle series. And the amygdala is that fear response. And guess what the opiates do to that? They turn it down. I'm not scared, everything's good, I'm gonna turn down that fear response. So it activates the pleasure centers, it turns down your fear response. And then it also, it goes and activates your prefrontal cortex, which is your decision-making ability, and sort of bypasses that, so you don't really think too clearly, you're just thinking more basic, like just, I just want pleasure and reward. Mm. If you like psychology and learning about mental health and wanna learn more while meeting other people who are interested, Explore your membership options using the link below this video or visit medcircle.com. So now you're setting yourself up for, your brain goes, wow, that was awesome. And our brains are wired to feel pleasure. Like evolutionarily, if something feels good, we should probably do it again, mm -hmm. right? So the brain develops connections now to reinforce that. So it develops highways and connections that are more direct and easier to get that pleasurable response and will tell parts of your brain, like the basal ganglia and the prefrontal cortex, to crave that again. You need to get that again. Mm -hmm. You need to get that again, mm -hmm. right? So now you get this craving to do it again. Now let's throw something in the mix that your brain does when it's flooded with something. When your brain is flooded with something that it doesn't really need or that it senses is too much, also kind of says, whoa, slow down. What is this? This is too much. So there's a theory called receptor down regulation. Now let's just say, and this is incredibly simplistic, okay. right? Now, let's couple this with someone that is going through a difficult time in their life. So now let's create the perfect storm. We just gave your brain a dose of the best euphoria it's ever felt. And we just created a reward circuit to crave that substance again. And let's create a down regulation where you need more to feel that again. And now you're in a bad place in your life where you don't feel good to begin with. So you're going to crave it even more. You're going to need more. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you realize that not only do I need more to get that same feeling, but when you stop, because of these neurological changes that have happened physiologically in your brain, when you stop, you get physically sick. Mm -hmm. And that's called withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So we just basically, in a very simplistic fashion, discuss tolerance and withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you use substances. So, so the take home points are, opiates bind to opiate receptors, the lock and key, yep. the opiate is the key, is the, key. Right. the lock is the receptor, mm -hmm. and when you're taking it on the outside, you're activating your neurons to talk to each other in a fashion that creates euphoria and reward and a pleasant feeling. The more you take, the more you need to get that mm -hmm. same feeling because of down regulation and homeostasis. And when you stop, because of those neuronal changes, you're gonna become physically ill, and that's withdrawal. And What's happening too is that, and this is really sad, this, this to me is tremendously difficult for addicts to deal with. Mm. And this is why stopping is so hard, the neuroscience behind it, is that when you are flooding your body with that protective opiate, which is a natural pain reliever, your body becomes more sensitive to pain when you don't have it. Mm. So if you're an opiate addict and you don't have that opiate, things hurt so much more. A little ache and a pain that I might have in my knee right now that's just a nuisance is gonna be a painful throb when I don't have the opiate. My shirt 
instead of feeling like a nice piece of linen, is gonna feel like sandpaper mm. when I don't have that opiate in there. So your skin and your sense has become more sensitive, mm -hmm. which, which puts you in a very difficult position, right? So all of those things are stacking the odds against you that you're gonna be able to stop this. I have excessive pain. I feel physically sick when I stop. My brain is, re is rewired to crave this, mm -hmm. right? So all of these things are sort of stacking those chips against you, making it incredibly difficult to stop. So when we talk about treatment and detox, the viewers hopefully will understand a little bit more of what we're trying to achieve with detoxification. Yeah. So detoxification is sort of preventing that physiologic response in the brain for all of that physical discomfort right. to make that transition easier. Right. Okay, and I okay. hope I made that as simple as I could. Oh, it was, it was incredibly clear okay. and very simple. I think that gives, a, that gives people who might be using drugs an understanding of what's going on yeah. in their body. And maybe even more importantly, it gives people who know somebody who's using drugs a better understanding of what they're going yeah. through. These are things out of their control. Yeah. Taking drugs, while on the surface looks like a very selfish mm -hmm. behavior, and perhaps you could argue it is, there are things out of their control that's causing this behavior yeah. to reoccur, reoccur, reoccur. They are basically rewiring their brain to become selfish and focused mm -hmm. on getting that yes, next exactly. fix. Right. So they rewired their brain. They're, they're circumventing the parts of the brain that is reasonable mm -hmm. and says, wait a minute, what you're doing is not a good idea. It's yep. not safe. This yep. is dangerous. You're circumventing that because your brain wants that wants that receptor to be filled. That's all it cares yes, about in a very yes. primitive way. Yeah. So when your loved one is stealing money out of your pocketbook or purse or wallet to go get a fix, yeah. we take it personally. Like, how could you steal from me? This is horrible. And it is horrible. Yeah. But it's this primitive drive right. that your reason is just out the window. Your right. sort of ability to reason and make sense of things is out the window. So you really are rewiring your brain to not be a very likable person, yeah. um, which is why it's so hard you yeah. know, to deal with addicts as family members and loved ones. Yeah.